Okay guys, so I've got a banger for you in this one. We are reviewing a Donny Nietes fight. This Filipino Hall of Famer is among a select few boxers from the Philippines who have been able to win major titles across at least four different weight classes. Nietes' opponent in this fight was another veteran of the sport, Argentinian Juan Carlos Reveco. In this particular fight, Nietes was defending his world IBF flyweight belt. This was an interesting matchup as there was a difference in height, style and a major title on the line. Nietes possesses a formidable boxing record and many accolades spanning his long career. In this fight, we shall observe some of his skills and abilities. Okay, thoughts and opinions at the end. Let's get straight into the action. Expect you to conduct yourself as such. Both of your trunks are a little high. This is legal here. This is legal here. Touch gloves. Good luck. The Philippines have had a very proud tradition of producing great fighters throughout boxing history. And while Nietes has not been Manny Pacquiao or Pancho Villa or Flash Alorde quite, he has forced himself onto that list among the great Filipino fighters of all time. Riveco is the kind of tough right, opponent that Nietes has beaten time and again throughout his championship run. And Andre uh, Nietes is a guy who has proven throughout his career that he can either box or punch. Uh, tonight, he probably is in the position of getting to choose what he wants to do. Rebecco, even though he's only giving one inch up in height, it's enough that he sees himself as the shorter fighter and understands he probably needs to get inside. Yeah, Rebecco obviously has been the shorter fighter for most of his career. He acknowledges that, but he's learned to overcome that. He's okay with that. And with Nietes, he's a veteran. He, on a scale from one to 10, he's gonna give you a consistent five or six. He's not gonna do anything that's gonna wow you, but he does a lot of crafty, uh, subtle things in there that's definitely gonna get your attention and get Rebecco's attention as well. And we begin with Nietes landing his jab and delivering one right hand across the top. Fighting at a major pace. Nietes is reminds me of you in certain ways, Andre. His he's a disruptive fighter. He punches. His rhythm disrupts the other guy. He punches when the other guy doesn't want to engage. He disengages when the other guy wants to engage. That's the name of the game. He's very efficient, and he only does what he has to do. And so far, he has blocked every punch that Rebecco has tried, blocking the body shots with his arms, blocking the upstairs stuff with his gloves. Rebecco, by my lights, hasn't really landed anything yet. CompuBox sees him at 1 for 11. Yet this will also quadruple and quintuple up on the jab at times. There's a lot of crafty things in there as the fight wears on. You can see that Rebecco is trying to get to the body with wide ringing shots. And the chances are when he lets his hands travel out to the side like that, wins those shots, that Nietes is going to see them coming and pick them off with his defensive skills. Yeah, Nietes is definitely going to discipline Rebecco every chance that he gets. And Rebecco knows that. He mentioned that to us in the fighter meeting about how he can't get too over anxious. He's a very aggressive fighter. He has a high punch count, but he knows that Nietes is a veteran, and he knows that Nietes is a natural counter puncher as well. Already we see Rebecco has thrown 21 punches to this point in the first round. In his last fight, he came out firing 70, 75, 80 punches per round, and he's already being limited to a considerably slower pace tonight by the tactical effectiveness of Donnie Nietes. Rebecco sneaks in a right hand to the body. Rebecco gets in another right hand to the body as Nietes misses with the right upstairs. Stop another the bell, really good combination the bell. to the body that Rebecco landed, especially the right hand. Johnny Nietes came to town early to prepare for this fight and worked out at the wild card gym 
But of course, Manny Pacquiao is not in the wild card gym these days. He's back in the Philippines practicing politics. Niete said that he and his trainer, Edmund Villamore, uh, got in some good work at the wild card and got some effective advice and help from Freddie Roach, but not from the Filipino adjunct to that uh, wild card team, uh, Marvin Simodio. He also got some good rounds in with Brian Valori. Who, who fought suffered an upset loss on the undercard here tonight. But fought a great fight. It was a, it was a great fight. And Valoria suffered a bad, gruesome cut, I believe, in the 11th round. Uh, but the fight was pretty much decided at that point. The United States Olympian, brilliant prospect coming out, has had a bit of a hard luck career. Valoria has it had an excellent career. Um, and, yeah, a bit of a hard luck one. A popular fighter when he turned pro, an Olympian. An offensive fighter, a crowd pleaser, a good personality, and wasn't didn't become a dominant champion, but would have been an excellent fighter as he has been in any era. Great, great person. See, there you see the subtlety of Nietes. Not a lot, not a lot of big movements, but just enough to slip. He looks at what he wants to punch, but he won't take the shot now. He'll take it in the third or fourth round. That's a veteran tactic and a veteran move. Say, so great, Andre, that you cited the subtlety of it. I was just getting ready to say, look at the subtle head movement by Nietes, who doesn't have to do much to make Rebecca miss. And as you said that, he slipped the punch. He, he slipped and picked the punch with his left glove. He landed a jab right when Rebecca was trying to disengage. He's just a very crafty guy. These are the kinds of moves that don't necessarily catch the eye of that many people in the arena. But the opponent, when he watches Nietes do that, he's stuck with having to say to himself, you know, this guy's really good. Uh, I, I, I'm not able to do what I want to do. Jim, my predecessor in this seat, the great Larry Merchant, used to talk about a fighter in the pocket like this. This is called the pocket, where you're in punching range, like a great quarterback. The blitz is coming and things are flying all around and he calmly sidesteps and delivers the ball. And Yetes is like a really seasoned quarterback in the pocket. Look at that. Well chosen body shot by Nietes while Rebecca was missing upstairs. And now Rebecca comes back with a couple of body shots of his own. But in the closing seconds of round two, already by CompuBox count, Nietes is doubling Rebecco in landed punches. Donnie Nietes' ring nickname is ha -ha, the Tagalog word hold. So underexpressive that that smile he broke out in the middle of talking about the snakes represented a major emotional display for him. That shows you that he loves the snakes. Uh, you know, I, I bring this metaphor up from time to time, or an analogy up between boxing and chess. And the best chess books, I think, teach by showing you a master versus every different level of opponent, from beginner to expert. And the most interesting games are the master against the expert, because you see the subtle differences. And in this fight so far, you've seen why Nietes has been a long-reigning belt holder. Because in against an expert fighter, a world-class fighter, there's a subtle difference in terms of the depth of his skill, Andre. The way he picks punches, the calmness in the pocket, the countering, the pacing, he is, he's a master. He's a master, and you only get that through experience. Sometimes bad experiences and sometimes good experiences. And in Nietzsche's case, he's had a lot more good experiences than he's had bad. I mean, he's on a 14-year winning streak. Um, he's the longest reigning Filipino champion in boxing history. That's for a reason. One loss in his career. And it took place in September of 2004. Since then, all wins other than four different draws. And as much as um, flack as I give the sanctioning bodies, and they deserve it, the fact is, if you're a long reigning belt holder, that makes title def mandatory after mandatory. Chances are you're going to have an off night. Absolutely. Chances are against another world-class opponent without a lot of fanfare, you can come in underprepared, or you, you, you just didn't have it that night. And Nietzsche hasn't had that. He's been consistent every time, been able to overcome world-class opponents. Consistency in this game is definitely underrated. 
Sometimes we as boxing fans, we get exciting. We get excited with the, you know, the shooting star, the guy that's making a big splash or, you know, making a lot of noise in the moment, and that's fine. But show me the guy that has success against top competition over an extended period of time. That's the guy that gets me excited. Well, and that's, it was consistency over a long period of time. It was 46 consecutive wins with 38 knockouts that lifted Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez to the number one ranking pound for pound in the world coming into calendar 2017. But as his experiences with Srisaket Sorum Visai show, there's somebody out there in this overwhelmingly vast and variety-filled world of boxing. There's somebody out there who has your number. And you just never know when you're going to run into that guy. Chocolatito Gonzalez could never have really known before he first fought Srisis at Soren Visa that this was the guy. Particularly with pressure fighters in the lighter divisions, they tend to age very quickly once they hit about 30. Which makes it interesting. So far in the fight, Rebecca is landing 13% of his total punches by CompuBox count. If you look at Nietzsche's last three opponents combined, they landed 14.5% of their punches. So in other words, he's this good defensively against just about anybody he faces. And that means that he doesn't have to do all that much offensively to be the winner of most of his rounds. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim, I got a three to nothing, 30 to 27, Don in the I, I, I got to tell you, Jim, he's a very good fighter. I never saw him before, you know, live, but boy, I'll tell you, he's an excellent fighter. He punches real good in the middle of the ring. He keeps the fight where he wants it, you know. His ring generalship is excellent. And he outpunches Juan Carlos Rebeco in just about every round that I've watched so far in this fight. Uh, three to nothing, Don in the okay? okay. Max Kellerman compared him to Andre Ward. There can be fewer, higher compliments than that. There but can in a be very, very few. In a very specific way. He doesn't remind me of Andre as an overall fighter, but in the sense that he dictates what's happening. He frustrates his opponent by doing what the opponent doesn't want to happen, by engaging and disengaging with a rhythm that upsets his opponent. In that respect, he's very much like Andre, I think. If you know anything about Riveco, like we mentioned earlier in the telecast, Riveco is a two-fisted fighter. He punches with volume. He throws a lot of punches, and he's aggressive. But you see Nietes, who's the consummate professional, he's the veteran. His nickname is Snake. He's almost like a snake charmer, where he's very deceptive. He's taken the punch count of, Niet of, of Rebecca, excuse me, down, and Rebecca, in so many cases, is shell-shocked. He can't do what he wants to do, and I don't even think he realizes that right now. And yet Nietes is right in front of him, and he can't land the punches. And it also means that Nietes doesn't have to take any chances on offense to be offensively in control. He's landing 23% of his punches. That's not high, but it's enough to double what Rebecca is able to do. And a veteran like Nietes, you'll see him slowly start to pick it up. He'll throw just a little bit more each round until he gets the shots that he wants to get. And you'll look up and he'll either score a knockout or you'll look up and the fight will be over and he's won most of the rounds. That's how it goes. I, I don't know what the booing is about. I, I don't find this to be a, a boring fight. A little bit one-sided, obviously, but... If you like boxing craft, you're seeing a lot of it here. And, and it's well, not of course. as though he's not moving his hands. Hands and punches are flying. If the ticket buyers come from the boxing cultures that spawn the fighters on the card, Argentina, the Philippines, Mexico, uh, they expect to see aggressive fighters with an offensive bent. That's what they're used to. More risk-taking. Exactly. Stop at the bell. Stop at the bell. That's probably the the genesis of the booing. But through the first four rounds, CompuBox finds him landing six punches per round out of 45 punches per round thrown. And Nietes has more than doubled him in terms of landed punches. So while the crowd may be booing because they hoped for something more spectacular in terms of give and take, we're looking again at mastery. And we don't know how the rest of the fight is going to play out. There's a lot of fight left, but if I had to guess, I think Rebecca was thinking right now that everything I heard about Donnie Nietes is true. If I had to guess, I think the boos might be louder in round eight and nine. I, I like what, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I see two guys throwing punches. You tell me when there's a significant break in the action. Look, here comes Rebecca. His hands are moving. Nietes' hands are moving. They're just also both playing defense. Right now, I'm focusing on the accuracy of Nietzsche's left hook. 
I, I don't see any holding. I don't see any running. I don't see any long periods of inaction. Good fight so far. Once again, Nantes ducks and slips a few punches and sneaks in a left hook. If you watch Nietes, even when he's under attack, he stays calm the whole time. And for the young fighters watching at home, that's something to look at. It's not always the flashy defensive move, but it's the subtleties, it's the small things, and keeping calm under composure. Excuse me, keeping composure under fire. And Nietes has done that this whole fight. Neveco spent four years on the Argentine national team with Lucas Matisse and Marcus Maidana and acknowledged that uh, they are the kinds of fighters that Argentine fans love to watch and that he, in effect, loves to watch. We asked him if there's any chance that the long-dreamed-about fight between Maidana and Matisse could ever conceivably take place, and he smiled and said, well, for Maidana, that would have been about 100 pounds ago. So, <laughs> unlikely it's ever going to happen. See, what the fans want here is one of these guys to just for, to lose their discipline, to just start winging shots. But it's actually a better fight than that. Both fighters are remaining disciplined, even when their opponent, particularly Nietes, is doing things to frustrate them. And it's tough to give Rebecca some type of game plan right now to get to Nietes because, one, he's the shorter fighter, so he can't box on the outside. If he comes inside and starts to open up, Nietes is waiting to counter. Rebecca's in a real tough spot right now in this fight. Nietes is hard to hit even when you're in close, in close quarters. He's still hard to land against. But that's what I mean. That's what Rebecca on paper wants to be. But Nietes is comfortable inside. Stop with the bell, guys. Stop with the bell. Total punches in round five. Dani Nietes landed 18 out of 79. And Juan Carlos Rebeco of Argentina landed seven out of 53. We're at the Forum in Los Angeles, looking at a couple of 112-pound fighters. The guy in the purple trunks, Dani Nietes, is a champion in the division. Hard left hook by Nietzsche. Follows it up with a two-punch combination. One of the subtle differences you can see in these two fighters, the, the master versus the expert, you know, Nietzsche as, as the master, there's less wasted movement. Rebecco, you can see, in order to establish his rhythm, is making bigger motions and and oftentimes for no direct apparent reason Andre whereas Nietzsche's movement every move seems to be for a purpose yeah that's where that goes that's his rhythm that's how he gets himself going it's almost like a telegraph where he's letting you know that the attack is coming and Nietzsche being the fighter that he is he can see that and he'll stick a jab out huh, slow down He'll put a hook to the face or a jab to the stomach just to let Rebecco know, I see what you're doing, and I'm not going to let you get revved up and get started. And he's been doing that all night. But Rebecco's doing the right thing right now. He's going to have to sell out a little bit, be willing to get to get hit, to get his. Because if he stays back and allows Nietes to snake charm him, he's going to be on the end of Nietes' punches all night long. Right, and that's where, at a early on, I think it's it's can't say it's unfair for the crowd to boo because the crowd feels how they feel. They paid their money. They're entitled to express themselves. But eventually in this fight, if it continues this way, you're right. Rebecca, what he's doing, it's not working. It will be time to go to plan B. Which and he's been doing this round. That's he's right. had some more success. That Rebecca left took is one of the best punches he's landed in the fight. But he had to eat five or six good punches just to get in position to throw. Well, the difficulty with plan B oftentimes is it involves some selling out, and it can hasten the fighter's demise. In order to give themselves a chance to actually win, they have to increase the odds that they get stopped or get beaten badly. Well, this is actually Rebecco's plan B. This is who he is. He's a two-fisted fighter, and he's aggressive, and he likes to throw a lot of punches. He went against his own nature, which was to lay back and try to think with, with a master thinker, and that's where he went wrong. This round, this is who Juan Carlos Rebecco really is. As one of the greatest of all boxing publicists, 
Mike Tyson said, in boxing, you got to bring it the bell, together. Stop the that bell. isn't exactly what he said, but that's the point. <laughs> One of James Tony's favorite expressions, too. Mm. Oh, oh. Rebecca got hurt with something at the end of that round. Something short. Short right hand, and I believe it was the left hook that followed. He looked out on his feet, Andre. He was out on his feet. And the answer is no. Hey, Rudy Hernandez. Hey. man now looking in at Rebecca, trying to figure out exactly what the situation is. I'll tell you, the situation to me looks, Jim, like maybe he should not come out for this next round. He's going to be allowed to come back out and fight, and he got extra time between rounds to recover. He's still out on his feet, even with the extra time that he was given. He's still out. He does, his legs don't know where the canvas is. See, he doesn't. He does. His balance is shot. His that, legs are gone. That's why he's running like that to try to get his leg. But watch the veteran. He's going to start to pick it up, and you'll see him as aggressive as he's been all night. And he landed a lead right hand flush. As he now looks for the next opportunity. The coach just has huge heart. But now Nietes has a sitting duck in front of him. Yeah, and I think this is highly questionable for the California Commission. As Rebecco has been allowed to come back in and fight Four, at a moment when five, he was obviously six, compromised. Seven. Hey, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. His corners come allow to him to continue. His, his legs are not obeying his brain. Stop it, right right here, stop everybody. It. And now right. somebody in the corner is waving a white flag and intelligently so. And still, WBO flyweight champion of the world, Donny Ahas Nietzsche. Okay, guys, so a great fight to watch. We have just seen a clean and highly proficient technician go to work and dispatch his opponent with ease. Both fighters were well experienced at the time of this fight with about say 40 plus fights. So veteran status between the two of them. However, one apparent difference between them was that Nietes had accumulated a significant amount of skill that easily surpassed that of Raveco. His know-how, savvy and fluidity within the ring gave him a tremendous advantage over Raveco. He also maintained sound defense and stayed at a comfortable range to overwhelm his shorter opponent. Just as Andre Ward stated, this display of pure boxing was not a flashy one, but a more technical and disciplined one. Whenever Nietes landed anything significant, he did not begin to showboat, demonstrate any bravado or taunt his opponent and lose his form with his arms going down as boxers normally do when they become overconfident. Instead, he remained calm and consistent, did not slack on his defense and provide Riveco with any easy opportunities. In this fight, he put on a professional performance in a composed manner. This is definitely the type of fight that young boxers need to watch, analyze and embrace, ultimately because there are specific skills that you can rely on to tip the scales of the balance in your favor. But before you can implement them in the same professional manner that Nietes does, you must respect them and dedicate an unrelenting amount of focus to hone in them. Anyway guys, that's all for now. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please remember to smash the like button if you've enjoyed watching this particular update. Leave a comment in the comment section if you want to add anything about Donny Nietes. So until my next one, peace out.